Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for April 17th, 2023 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. Today there was some overnight rain into the early morning, but by the time the count started, that had gone away and we even had a bit of sunshine throughout the morning. Winds were light and southwesterly. We had a band of rain come through towards the late morning, and after that passed through, the wind shifted to a more northerly direction and it got cloudier. I arrived at the Hawk Watch just as these two sandhill cranes were flying over. Here's some northern flickers down in the grass, and there were two males, and they were trying to impress a female. And the males do this thing with their bills where they kind of go like this. It's kind of comical to watch them like move their head. They, they do that, and then they freeze for a few seconds, and then they, they do this thing again. So uh, I don't think the female was too impressed by it all, though. Here's a great blue heron. Notice that great blue herons normally have their necks curved into an S when they fly compared to the straight necks of sandhill cranes. We had a moderate flight for that first section of the day with decent numbers of sharp shinned hawks and here we have a group of turkey vultures. Here's a red shouldered hawk high overhead. We can see those pale crescents near the wingtips and also the relatively long tail for a beautio. We had a really nice movement of rusty blackbirds today. And you can see they're kind of glossy overall with a pale eye. Here's an adult broad-winged hawk. You can see that orange barring underneath and the really straight trailing edge to the wing. Let's take a look at a few northern harriers. So here we have an adult male with that distinctive plumage with the gray head and really white underneath with black wingtips and black at the tips of the secondaries. Here we have an adult female, which are brown overall and have a lot of streaking that starts at the upper breast and goes down quite far. Adult females also have a lot of markings in the patagial area here. And here we have a juvenile northern harrier, and we can see that it's relatively plain underneath. Some of them do show a little bit of streaking on the upper breast, but you can see compared to that adult female, doesn't have anywhere near the streaking underneath or the markings in the patagial areas here. Here we have an adult Cooper's hawk, a bit of a flying cross. We can see the big head and the really long tail with a rounded tail tip because the outer feathers are shorter than the central tail feathers. Here we have an osprey high overhead and this one has relatively strongly marked necklace. Here we have an immature golden eagle. We can see those white patches in the wings, a relatively small head compared to the tail, and more of a rounded or curvy look compared to the more square, blocky shape of bald eagles. You can see that those wings really pinch in near where the tail meets the body. That's a distinctive thing to look for on golden eagles compared to bald eagles. And the golden eagle was right at the beginning of a big flight that happened in the late morning, early afternoon, where the winds had shifted to be out of the north and it was really slow for a while. And then just all of a sudden we had tons of birds. We had the golden eagle, we had a lot of turkey vultures starting to migrate and we had a few hundred broad winged hawks as well. So pretty spectacular flight overhead at the platform. Here we have a juvenile bald eagle. You can see it's got a lot of white in the wing pit areas. It's a juvenile, meaning born last year. So it's got a dark head, dark underside and an even trailing edge to the wing because all of the feathers are the same age. Here's one of the local osprey carrying a fish back to the nest. And here we have a merlin zipping by the platform. Merlins are small, dark falcons. You can see that dark streaking on the underside. And they have a really aggressive flight style compared to kestrels. Kestrels are a little more buoyant, a little more casual in the way they fly and look lighter underneath. Merlins are all attitude and they look dark underneath because of that dark streaking. The flight really slowed down at the platform, so around 2.30 we moved over to Frisbee Hill Park since the winds were out of the northeast. And we had a decent flight there. We had another 100 broad wings and we had decent numbers of red-tailed hawks and sharp shins and other migrants. Here's another adult broad-winged hawk and we're primarily seeing adults right now, the juveniles migrate later on. For the adults, you're just looking at a small compact beautio with relatively pointed wingtips because the wingtip only has four feathers compared to the five feathers of red tails and red shoulders, which give them more of a rounded wingtip. We also see that really straight trailing edge to the wing. And since they're adults, they have the dark trailing edge to the wing. 
Here we have an adult Cooper's Hawk. You can see that relatively large head and kind of fierce looking face. Looks like it has a full crop, so it is eaten recently. Really long tail and the orange barring underneath lets us age it as an adult. We had another rain shower pass through and following that the winds shifted back to a more westerly direction and the flight died down over at Frisbee Hill. So we came back to Braddock Bay Park for the last hour, but the flight never really picked up. Just one final sharp shin to end the count. If we take a look at the eBird lists from Braddock Bay Park, I had 59 species. From Frisbee Hill, I only put in a partial checklist and a partial list from Braddock Bay Park at the end of the day. And we just had the one Sharpie and we had one other bird go by that at first I thought maybe it was a pigeon and then I thought it was a falcon. Then looking at the photos, maybe it's an exhibitor. So I don't know what it is. It could even be a shorebird. The photos didn't turn out real well and it was pretty distant. So who knows on that one. Looking at hawk count for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 453 turkey vultures, one osprey, 15 bald eagles, 14 northern harriers. For exhibitors, we had 89 sharpies and 10 coops. For butios, we had 7 red shoulders, 384 broad wings, and 49 red tails. We had the one golden eagle. And for falcons, we had 11 kestrels and 3 merlins for a total of 1,037 migrant raptors today. That brings our April total to 16,203 and the season total to 25,375. There were no new species for the season today. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking cloudy with a high around 45, so relatively cold. Winds west-southwest at 15 to 25 miles per hour. So these conditions are pretty similar to last Tuesday, the 11th, when we had a really big flight except that it's going to be much colder tomorrow than it was that day. And that day we had kind of a thin cloud layer in the morning, but we had a really low flight of sharp shins and kestrels on that day. So I'm thinking that with these winds, we should get a decent flight. I don't know if it'll be a huge flight, but it's going to stay good winds all day, west, southwest, and relatively strong. So even if it's kind of a thick overcast, I'm hopeful that birds will continue to move. We're in the time of the season that big broad-winged hawks flights are possible. I was looking at past years, and there was um, a year that on that date we had something like 5,000 broad wings. So we can get pretty big flights this early in the season, although mostly they come after this. But it is possible, and we had a decent number of broad wings today in relatively lousy conditions, I would say. So... It's a little bit hard to predict just because it's good winds, but you have to factor in that cold temperature and the fact that it's going to be so cloudy. It depends how thick that cloud cover ends up being. So anyway, it's hard to hard to give a definite answer. I'm hopeful that we'll go out there and have a good day. At least we'll have clouds. It'll be easy to spot the birds even if they're up high, but maybe we'll get lucky and have another low flight like we had last week. So you'll have to come out to find out how it ends up being. For Wednesday, it's looking cloudy early and then partial sun late, high in the low 50s, winds west-northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So not the best wind direction, not the worst. I'd expect moderate migration. And for Thursday, cloudy skies early will become partly cloudy later, high in the low 50s, winds east-northeast at 10 to 15. So expect light to moderate migration and we might have to move to Frisbee Hill. All right, well, I went into today with fairly low expectations, but we ended up having some surprise activity there in the midday and, and even in the afternoon over at Frisbee Hill. So always nice to be surprised with a thousand bird day when you're not expecting it. First day that we've really had a decent broad-winged hawk flight with getting a few hundred. So the season's really starting to pick up for them and we're right in the peak migration time for a lot of other species as well. So even when conditions are a little questionable, sometimes we still get a decent flight. Hope to see you out at the Braddock Bay Hawk platform soon. From Lake O'Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.